Beautiful. So beautiful. Just waiting for a few people to join, a few more people to join, and then we'll get started. This is gentle yoga. So if you are um, watching uh, after the live, if this is the YouTube channel uh, version, uh, you might want to go ahead and collect a couple of props. So on Monday's yoga is typically a little bit more gentle than Fridays. We incur I incorporate a little bit more strength work and we do some standing poses. Um, but Monday mornings, I think sometimes it's nice to ease into your morning and unwind from the weekend. So if you would like to um, maybe grab a towel, if you have a blanket, a yoga blanket, that's even better, but a towel works great. If you have a bolster like the green, uh, feel free to grab that. Or I'm using a pillow, which happens to be a kind of a mini bolster version so and then if you have an eye pillow at home you might want to have that as well and then any blocks if you have blocks that's great but you don't um, have to have them just collect a few things if you are used to using the props and you have them at home that's great um, I'm just gonna check something for a moment and make sure typically all right, and I'm gonna check real quick on my phone. Oh, good morning, Heather. Oh, wow, what a great surprise. Nice to see your smiling face in that little tiny picture. <laughs> I love it when people have that. And Mary Beth Dyson, hey, good to see you in that little picture. Um, happy you guys are here and gonna get your gentle yoga going on. We'll just wait a couple more seconds, but I was saying that, um, if you have, so gentle, usually on Mondays, I, it's a little bit more on the gentle side. And then Fridays, um, I incorporate some standing poses and, it's, and some strength, a little bit of strength as well. So for today, if you have a bolster like the green at home, fabulous. You might want to have that. A, a towel will work just fine. If you have a towel that you can use or a pillow, I got this off of a chair and um, it works great as a little bolster. So a towel or a pillow. If you have blocks at home, you might as well um, keep them nearby as well. It's nice to have and we may um, incorporate them. And I just wanted to share this beautiful flower that um, my husband cut this morning and it smells amazing. It's a peonies and it actually wasn't this open about 20 minutes ago. So it is popped open beautifully. So I highly recommend, I, when I see people with flowers in their yard that are kind of drooping over, I'm like, ah, I wanna go cut them and put them on their doorstep and say, take them inside, take them inside. So if you have a, a pretty flower nearby in your garden, I wouldn't recommend taking someone else's, but um, cut it and bring it inside because it can make you happy. Also, just a few administrative things um, besides the props. This is going to be the last Facebook Live class for Ease. They're going to switch to Zoom classes. So the Friday, my Friday class will be on Zoom and then all the classes starting, I think, the class after mine. So you can always go to the Ease Yoga Facebook page and see updates. And um, for now, there are free classes. I'm not sure if that's going to switch or not. So. You can also go to the YouTube channel, Ease Yoga and Cafe, and see all of the Facebook Live uh, classes that have been going on for the last two weeks, or three weeks, actually. And um, they're free classes. So, all right, well, let's get started. It's so great, thank you. Good morning, Sherry. Nice to see you this morning. And I also have a reading that I'm gonna take out of this book called The Daily Ohm. And I love it and have used it over the years, as you can see, many, many times with all my little sticky things. And it also comes via uh, in your inbox online. So if you just go to dailyom.com, daily O-M, like OM, and um, it has some great inspirational thoughts for a happy, healthy, and fulfilling day. And the one I'm going to read, but I'm going to wait till we get onto our backs, is called Let Yourself Be Carried. So let's go ahead and start. 
and we'll let people join as they wish. So I'm, I like to start people on their backs. I think sometimes it helps you kind of relax a little bit more. If you just rolled out of bed, you can sit up if you prefer, um, but let's go ahead and come over onto the mat and come over onto your back. And again, if you have a prop, a pillow or a bolster, I'm not sure a towel is um, going to be thick enough for this particular pose, but just stick it underneath of your knees and then gently roll down onto your back. One more thing is that I'm going to demonstrate poses, but I'm also going to cue you in poses. So I'll come off and away from the mat and hopefully cue you so you can be a little bit more in your body as opposed to have to look at the monitor or the computer. So come on down onto your backs and feel free to do any fidgeting that you need to do or any movement, shake it out. Maybe take the arms up over the top of the head, stretch through the toes, give yourself a nice stretch to awaken. Exhale, bring the hands down to the sides. Take it again, inhale, relax the legs for now. Inhale, reach the fingers behind you, even if the shoulders come up towards the ears, that's okay for now. And then as you exhale, relax the shoulders, draw the hands down to the sides. Just let the legs relax. Take that a couple more times if you'd like. Using a big inhalation and nice and full. And then exhale, start to soften through your exhalation. And then once you come down, maybe shake the head a little bit, lift one shoulder, then the other. Just kind of like ragdoll it a little bit here. Not too much effort. And then taking the arms to the sides, bending a little in the elbows, give yourself space in between the arms and the body. And then just let your palms and your fingers relax, facing up towards the ceiling, or you can pretend towards the sky. Take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Let it out through the mouth. Again, in through the nose. Out through the mouth. And then closing your eyes so you can stay where you are. Just want to check the volume. Feel free to give me any feedback if you are having problems hearing me or anything else. I did turn the volume up, which is good. And then just notice, just notice how it feels to move into some stillness. You didn't, using that nice wave of the breath, nourishing inhalation, soft surrendering exhalation. Maybe think about the face softening. Feel free to open up the mouth and move the jaw around. Let go of any clenching. If you haven't already, go ahead and close your eyes. Relax the shoulders. Soften through that third eye, right between the brow. See if you can direct one of your breaths right into that space. And as you exhale, you're softening. Just letting go of the, the business of your mind. Checking in with your attitude. Just noticing what your attitude is this morning. your energy level. Sometimes on a rainy day, we feel a little bit more sluggish or a little heavy. Whatever it is for you, just notice. There's no right or wrong answer. And remembering that, especially when we're using the props, that the magic isn't in the shape of the pose. It's really the attention that you pay to the sensations that you feel in the pose. So using props is not making it easier. It's just adapting for you so that you can actually feel the sensations in the poses. And that's really where the yoga is. So noticing and feeling the sensations in the pose and the attention that you pay so that you can really feel. And then we'll start to deepen your breath. So if you'd like, you can bring both hands to the belly, one hand on top of each other, or you can bring one hand to the belly and one to the heart, chest area, 
or you can just keep the hands exactly as they are. Take an inhale through the nose, nice, full, nourishing inhalation. Exhale fully through the mouth. This time as you inhale, just notice the fullness maybe of the belly. It might start to rise up towards the palm and then draw the breath up through the diaphragm in the rib cage all the way into the chest. Maybe even your chin starts to lift and it moves into the throat. And then exhale, just surrender into the exhalation, no effort. Inhale again. Feeling that nice, full, nourishing inhalation, moving up through the belly, rib cage, chest. Exhale, chest, rib cage, belly. Again, inhale on your next inhalation. Think nourishing, full, without too much, too much effort. And then exhale, surrendering. Sometimes you notice in that exhalation, it's almost like that feeling if someone was to give you a hug. It's sort of an ah sensation. Continuing at your own pace, inhaling through the nose and out through the nose. Imagine that the breath is moving into all of the spaces that you can't yet feel this morning, perhaps. This is that are stuck. Motions and things that we hold on to and they're just in a little box. You want to try to give some more space to that. Some more opening, a little more letting go and softening. And coming back to your natural breathing rhythm, just notice any physical sensations. And then slowly take an inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. And again, just checking in and noticing, just pausing and welcoming yourself to whatever state you're in. Consciously allow your body to land on the earth so that you feel support underneath holding you up. Breathe freely and listen inward. And through your practice, just letting go of the business of your mind. The flow of the universe moves through everything. It is the blossoming of a flower born from seed in the spring. The growth cycle that every human being goes through is part of its natural flow, which is also the current that takes us down life's paths. When we move with it, rather than resisting, we're riding on the universal wave that allows us to flow with life. Many people live struggling against the current. They try to force or resistance to, resistance to will their lives into happening in a way they think it should. Others move with it like a sailor, using the wind, trusting that the universe is taking them exactly where they need to be. This flow is accessible to everyone because it travels through and around us. We are always riding it. It's just a matter of whether we are willing to go with it or we resist. Choosing to go with the flow is often a matter of relinquishing the notion that we need to be in control at all times. And then slowly, keeping your eyes closed, just lift your arms up over the top of the head, give yourself a nice stretch, and then feel free to reach back with the right finger, stretch through the right leg, and then switching to the other side. Just making sure that you are um, inhaling as you reach and exhaling as you feel that contraction on the side. Keep going at your own pace and remember that you can always dial things down or you can dial things up. If you want to be more energetic, you might press through the heel and feel a little bit more of a stretch. Or maybe you bend into the elbows and you just barely glide back and forth. Good morning, Melissa and Joyce, and Leah, and Anne, so 
I'm happy that you guys made your way here this morning. And you're, if you're joining us, we are on our backs. I'm just cueing sometimes um, while you're in the pose to help you get a little bit more into your, your practice and experience. All right, and then we're gonna take both hands and you're gonna curl around holding underneath the shins and drawing the shins in gently, or you can take your hands in front of the, or excuse me, hold behind the thighs and bring the knees in, or you can hold in front of the shins, you can curl up and bring your head up if you would like to, and then lowering down as you exhale. So you might want to take that prop away or just push the prop away if it's underneath the knees. So bringing the knees in and out, taking the arms to the sides, or you can squeeze the shins round and curl and float the feet down gently. So inhaling, drawing the knees in and exhale. And then you're slowly going to take the legs along, take them towards the outer edges of your mat and give yourself some space. Hopefully you have enough space where you can really spread out. Make sure you can see me. Take your arms into a Y and then spread your fingers and hover the arms for a minute and the palms. Flex into the heels and then just relax and let everything go. One more time, inhale. Lots of activation through the leg, a little lift of the chin away from the chest. Your arms are hovering, you're spreading out your fingers, and then just gently let it all go. Lift your right hip up, roll it over towards the left, switch to the other side. If you want to take your head in the same direction, feel free, that's fine. Back and forth, or just roll with the hips. Let the feet slide in towards each other, and then away. Just rock them in and out, in and in. And out. Good. And then keeping your feet nice and wide, imagine that you are, I like to kind of call this the smile for the body. So you're in this Y shape or starfish, let's say. Take an inhale through the nose, let it out through the mouth. And relax. Good. Again, inhale, stretch your arms are down, your fingertip, your fingers are spread. And relax. Nice. And then walk your feet in towards the heels and then come up onto your tippy toes. Put a little pressure on your um, lower back, mid back, and even your upper back. Just keep walking the toes in. Think about the knees shining up towards the ceiling and then just a teeny little up on your tippy toes, lift the hips and then come back down. Lift the hips and come back down. Trying to keep your pelvis stable instead of kind of swaying around to the sides. Try to keep those points shining up towards the ceiling. You can change the arms if you would like and then lower down. Draw your right knee in towards your chest and then flatten that left foot and then switch. It's pretty close. You might feel a stretch in your uh, quads when you flatten that foot down and then come back. Walk the feet out a little bit. Take the legs long again. We're just going to take a couple snow angels here. So you're going to bring the arms up and then exhale down. You want to just do the arms. If you want to do the arms and the legs. Yeah, remember playing in the snow, those snow angels? It's kind of fun to be like a kid again. Good. And then walk the feet back up onto the mat. Take your feet towards the outer edges again so you have some space. And then you can decide how far away you want your heels to go once we start moving. Bring yourself back into the center. You can take your hands on your belly and then just take your right knee just a little bit over towards the right and then bring it back to the center. Drop the left knee. The right will follow. Try not to go into your biggest range right away. Be kind to your lower back and also make sure that you're not pushing the lower back down, which will cause some tension in the front of the body and it's just not comfortable as I want you to be in your neutral spine. So you might need to take your hand back there and make sure that you have a little bit of a curve there and you're rolling on this fleshy part. And just drop one at a time. You can stop in the middle if you like, but that feels good. And then eventually we're gonna let the head sway in the same direction. Inhaling through the center, exhale to the side and you can make your range a little bit better big wider. If your lower back if you're, is tight or if you have any lower back challenges, just take your hands to the sides of the body. That's 
safest place for your back. And then we're going to keep the hands there if you'd like. That's more comfortable. Then we're going to start to slide the arms up, flip the palms. And then as you drop the left knee and then the right, you're going to look towards the right, the opposite direction of the knees. Inhale. Exhale. Take your whole exhalation into the pose and then switch. Notice how that feels on your hip, on your lower back. It's a lot going on, even all the way through the foot, the leg, up the side body, into the shoulder. So adapt, change, use a bolster you know, on one side. If one hip is um, not feeling it today, give it some, bring the ground up by using the prop. And inhaling through the center. You can keep this nice and soft or you can make it more of a twist and lift that hip, pushing the hip a little bit towards the side, always checking and seeing how it feels on your body. Good. One more time each side, come back to the center, just a little small rolls through the center, walk the feet. Actually, keep the feet there, just draw the knees in towards each other for a little constructive rest. And always taking the hands to the sides if that's more comfortable for your back. And try not to push your back down. Keep your neutral spine here. Maybe flip the palms up. Just take a moment to notice. Make sure everybody's okay there. Good. And then you can take your knees wide and draw the knees in towards the outside edges of the body, float the feet up as best you can, keeping this nice opening here, hold behind the thighs, right? And then if you find that you're feeling like you're on your spine, then your knees are in too close. Take your knees and move them out so then you can feel more support on your lower back. And then you're gonna flex into the heels and point the toes. Flex into the heels and point the toes. You can also do this one at a time by keeping one leg down and just doing one at a time. If that feels better. Good, point and flex. And then see if you can roll the ankles around. You can draw the knees in closer if you wanna just focus on the feet and not the opening and the feet. Again, always checking in with your lower back. Good, and then you're just gonna sway a little bit side to side. Think about it massaging your lower back. Yeah. And you can circle. And then go in the other direction. And bring the knees in as close as you need to. Do the right or wrong way. Just kind of exploring. Good. And then coming down. Press into your feet. Walk your feet a little closer towards your buttocks. And then just lift the hips. Doesn't have to be very high. You're gonna swing your hips almost like they're a hammock. You're just gonna go back and forth lightly. You should feel a nice little massage in the mid back. Maybe a little into the upper back near the shoulder blades. Good. And then open up the arms. And this time you're just gonna bump out to the side. So you're bumping out to the left. You're gonna look to the left just beyond your um, underarm and then switch to the other side. So we're not looking at the palm, we're just looking at a diagonal in front of you. One more time each side. Make sure you take your exhalation with you when you bump to the side. You inhale when you come to the center. Lift up the hips a little bit higher, slide the hands down to the sides, maybe lift, feeling your shoulder blades support you a little bit more. Take a nice deep inhale here. Feel a nice big stretch through the quads. And then lower down. Relax the shoulders. Try one more time. Press into the feet. And give a little lift. Don't worry about how high it goes. Just go on your uh, sensation. Uh, uh, I was going to say like roller. Like just notice the sensation as opposed to the visual of the way you want it to look and then lower down. Great, take it one more time if you'd like to or flip the palms, stay here for two breaths. Feels good to move it, keep going. 
and then we're all going to meet with our feet on the ground. So if you do have a prop, even if it's a block or a blanket, if you'd like to keep it, I'm going to, let's say we're going to go to the left. So put it on the left side and it's not necessary. I'll show you both ways. All right. So you're going to lift your hips, bring your feet back into center and then lift your hips. Just move them a little over towards the right. Take your arms out to a T. You can also make it more energetic by bending the elbows or even holding opposite elbows. But for now, keep your hands either to the sides or right near um, the sides of the body. You're going to inhale and you're going to exhale and start to draw the knees over towards the right. You can keep the knees stacked or you can stagger them. You can also reach this top leg out and then you can hold on like to the shin. Those are just options. So start with the first option, which is making sure that you lift the hips, move a little to the right, come over. It could mean taking this right arm, draping it on the belly, and then just enjoying a little twist here. You can always change it up, but stay and breathe. You can move the feet so that they are right in front of the, um, right below the knees. And again, you can play around. You can stretch this leg out. You can turn your eye gaze towards the ceiling. It is early. It is Monday morning, so make sure that you're being gentle with yourself. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale out, and then come back to the center. So take this top foot and leg and just rotate it up and then let the left follow. Unwind, walk your feet back to the center. Maybe even take a peek. I'm very off center here, so I want to take a peek and bring myself back to the center. Good. Take a moment. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Let it out. And then you're going to walk your um, feet in just a little bit and you're going to lift the hips. You're going to draw them over towards the left and then rotate over, maybe taking your hand first to the side, going over into your twist and then using a prop. If you want to stretch that leg out and go into a little bit deeper twist, but start first, pay attention to the sensations. Breathe, especially imagining that exhalation going to wherever it is you're feeling it. And then adjust gently if you need to. I'm just going to go back to this side so that you can see. Also, if you want to take a peek. If you have your chin tucked in towards your, um, your shoulder, just lift your head slightly and bring it away. And notice how that changes the sensation through the collarbone. You can also use your prop on the opposite side to relax your arm. If you have a towel or something. So we're going to stay here for probably another eight breaths. Just as you need to. Long, deep breaths in and surrendering as you exhale. Feeling free to change it up whenever you need to. Checking time. Good. Use your inhalation to start to bring you around back to the center. Slowly bringing that top leg up, placing the foot on the ground, coming back, checking maybe a little peak. Bring yourself back into the center. Walk your feet wide towards the outer edges of the mat. Arms are to the sides, just let the knees fall in towards each other. Take a breath in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Nice, and then check. Just check in. Notice any sensations that you feel. Maybe you were able to let go of the busyness of your mind as you were exploring in that pose and adapting it to what felt best for you. And then drawing the knees in towards the chest. Again, you can hold underneath of the thighs. 
and gently bring them in, or you can be more energetic, holding the shins, squeezing and drawing the head up. Well, if you do have the head up, lengthen the back of the head down gently, and then we're all gonna roll over onto the side. Feel free to take a moment there. Take your time, move slow and gentle this morning. I think I showed you the flower. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, I have to take a little smell. The peony is it's amazing. It smells so good. We're going to come up to seated. And um, let's see. So in our seated pose, if you, again, have a towel or a blanket use the, or a little bolster or a big bolster, you can sit up on the bolster. I'm going to come off my mat, come a little closer to you. All right. And then once you're there, find a comfortable seat. So that might mean Sukhasana, which is crossing the legs here. You can sit in this position or you can sit with the legs crossed. You can take the legs in front of you if you prefer and stretch them out. If you are on a support, maybe move a little closer towards the edge so that you can the um, legs and knees are a little below the hips. That's comfortable. So take a moment to figure out a, a comfortable seat. I oftentimes use my blocks underneath of my knees as well. Um, if my hips are just feeling that this would be a gentler way to start. And then eventually as I'm breathing, maybe I take them away and they start to open up a little bit more. So feel free to try that as well. Once you're there, lift the flesh away to the sides or behind you, helps widen the seat. And then just roll the shoulders around a little bit. Feel free to kind of sway side to side if that feels good to you, or circle the hips, just some kind of movement. So the body really loves to be, if you think about it, like I, I see that, I, that visual of a skeleton, you know, when you like lift it up, it's like all, oh, like, that's like, our body wants to be soft and moved. It doesn't always want to be so linear and so um, always moving in, in the ways that we cook and drive and that sort of thing. So, so lighten up is basically what I'm saying. Be loose. Okay, we're going to inhale the arms up. We're going to exhale the arms down. And remembering in gentle yoga, you can just keep it nice and light. You know, everyone comes, shows up in a different way. And you can also imagine you have some resistance and you're pressing away. You want to get a little more action in your arms. So feel free to do that. Take three more up and down. You can also mix it up. So shout out to Karen. I don't think Karen is on this morning, but Karen is uh, usually lifts weights. I think over the weekends so on Monday classes, she's always like, oh, don't be doing anything strengthening the arms. <laughs> so, so she keeps it nice and light and pays attention to her body because her shoulders do not need the resistance on Monday mornings. All right, roll the shoulders back. Again, inhale, lift the arms. We're going to cross the left wrist underneath the right. The other one is fine too if you do that one. Just pick one and then as you come down, either holding on to the thighs or touching the knees, it doesn't matter where the hands go, you're gonna round into a little cat pose and then you're gonna inhale and rise. It's harder to do the cow and really expand here because you are obviously crossing, but just think of it as a little moving meditation, inhaling, exhaling, and rounding. And that might be a small round just to the upper back or it might be scooping the belly and being a little bit more active. You choose. This time we're going to inhale. We're going to go back and forth. So you're going to inhale, come all the way down. As you exhale, inhale, rise up. This time the right wrist will go down and you're going to scoop a little bit into the belly, round the back. Inhale, come up all the way around. Inhale, switch. And try not to think too much about it. You know, flow the arms up. You're getting that nice broadening through the collarbone. Inhaling, switching, and opening. Two more times. Inhale up, switching, holding wherever. Relax the shoulders if you want to. Keep it soft or make it more energetic. 
last time. Good. And then this time as you open, take your hands down to the side. You can stretch your legs out long. I'm going to move back a little so you can see me a little better. And then stretch your legs. Just shake them out. Point and flex. Ah, notice how that feels in the front of your feet. And then as you flex, noticing a little sensation through the calves, up through the hamstrings. Inhale, reach the arms forward. Why not? And then pull the shoulders into the sockets. Flip the palms as you point the toes. Exhale, flex into the feet. Good. And then you're going to point the toes. You're going to take your hands, palms towards each other. You're going to flip the palms. And then as you flex into the feet, you're going to bring the palms in towards you and then open up. Yeah, a little bit of a mind bender. Okay, took you a little out of your comfort zone. Uh, palms are together. Point the toes this time. Aim up the toes. Point the toes. Pull the shoulders back in towards the sockets. It's pretty energetic. And then flip the palms. Bend into the elbows as you scoop and open. Good. One more time. This time, flex into the feet. Flip the palms back to back. Bend into the elbows. Bring the fingers towards you, in towards the chest, and open. Nice. Bring the hands to the heart. Exhale down. Good. Massage the legs. So take your finger pads right here, and you're just going to go up and down. Use a little bit of um, friction so that you can feel circulation warming up. If you feel you might need a little bit more in the knees, sometimes on rainy days, people say, well, I've noticed too, you get a little bit more stiff. So give yourself this. You've been sitting for a long time and you get up and you're like, oh, my hips, my knees. Just stop and give them a little warmth. You can also use your hands to tap up and down, inside, underneath. Right. Close your eyes for a moment. Notice your legs. Maybe you have a little tingling. Maybe they just feel happy. If they could smile, they would smile. All right, and then you're going to switch, taking the opposite leg in front. If you were sitting in Sukhasana, keep the legs out straight. If you were, or if you want to change it up, if you had the legs straight most of the time, you can bend into the knees here. We're going to take a little twist. And usually you can kind of tell which leg if you bring them back and forth a few times. Lift the flesh. Again, give yourself a little movement through the torso. And then think about, sometimes I'll take my hands and I just press down in that crease here. I just press down a little bit more grounding through the sitting bones. Think about that nice neutral spine and the rooting down with the sitting bones, rising up with the energy through the head, crown of the head. Soften your hands. We're going to inhale, rise the arms up. You're going to inhale and reach over towards your right side and then letting that left hand fall wherever it goes. So if it's here, here, or here, it doesn't matter. Okay. Inhale, reach. Exhale, just let the hands fall where they go naturally. Inhale as you exhale. Notice maybe a little bit more broadening through the chest. Inhale, use your inhalation to help you come up and relax shoulders down. Inhale, this time we're going to stay on the right side. So once you stay there, again, let your hands and fingers fall wherever they go naturally. First, don't let your ego start to rotate you into something that maybe isn't right yet for you. Take an inhale, exhale. As you exhale, maybe you take a rotation, but only with that breath in little tiny increments. We're going to do this four times. So inhale, exhale, inhale, only as if it feels comfortable as you exhale. Try not to round here. Try to keep that nice integrity of your spine, noticing the sensations. Last time, inhale and exhale. Tuck your chin a little towards your chest. 
lift, rotate your eye gaze a little over towards the left knee. And inhale, come back to the center. Use your inhalation to bring you up with the arms. Rotate slowly, bend the elbows, come to the other side. Again, we're starting wherever the hands go first. You're breathing, you're inhaling. Sometimes I even put my hand on my chest so that it really helps me be aware of when I relax my shoulders in the exhalation, I broaden through the collarbone. That comes naturally. All right, so we'll keep going. And then you get to choose that moving the hands, rotating at your own pace. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale fully. Moving the hands and rotating as it as your breath allows. And maybe you notice one side is a little bit more um, open than the other or easier or adapts the sensations, adapts to those sensations in a different shape. And then inhale, use the arms, come back to the center, relax. We forgot to do the, um, the head though, so come back around for a second. Take an inhale, drop the chin towards the chest. Lift the head, just a little gentle chin towards the, our eye gaze towards the right knee or shoulder. Good, use your breath to inhale, come back to the center, open up those legs, take a little straddle here and maybe move a little closer if you're on a support, maybe come a little closer towards the edge. So. Come to whatever shape feels best to you, right? So that's part of why I like cueing because I don't want you just to see where my legs are and then expect that that's where your legs will be because yours might be wider, yours might be um, shorter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I want you to think sensation, what feels good as opposed to what the shape is. If you do have blocks, you can also put blocks underneath here. It feels really nice. Um, so explore the straddle for five more breaths, wherever you are. You can also take this thumb, first finger, go into the crease of your hips, press down, feel some nice length and more space through here, right? Relax the shoulders and relax the hands wherever you would like. Just, you don't have to activate the feet a lot. You can just make sure that the toes face up towards the ceiling. You can relax the feet if you'd like to. If you do give more activation to the feet, you'll notice a little bit more through the hamstring. And then breathe. Last full inhalation. Surrender into the exhalation. Imagine that the exhalation is going to wherever it is that you're feeling it. It needs a little bit more. Draw the legs back together, bring the feet in a little closer. So here you can hold underneath of the thighs, bringing your belly and your chest towards your thighs. You can round a little here if you would like to, or you can curl in and hold in front of the shins and round and curl. So um, if you have osteoporosis or osteoarthritis or other spinal challenges, it's best not to do a lot of forward flexion or rounding. So um, just be mindful of that. So I, I have osteoporosis, so I thread underneath and I kind of hang out here and I can round my upper back here. And I'm not taking more rounding and flexion. And then we're gonna come over onto your hands and knees. Once you come to your hands and knees, think about coming to your neutral table. So that means your knees are underneath of your hips, your feet are behind you, not coming in towards each other. And then tent your fingers here. And as you tent your fingers, start to press down, but forward, almost like you're pushing this way. So you're pressing, coming down onto the pads of underneath the knuckles, and then lowering down the palm, and then engaging the wrists. 
instead of just coming down onto the wrists, okay? So remember, tenting, spreading the fingers, use your whole hand and imagine that you're pressing forward a little bit. You can even kind of imagine that you're squeezing the fingers towards the mat and it opens a little tiny bit more space so that um, if you have any wrist uh, pain. All right, and then bump the hip one way, then the other, let your head, maybe shake yes and shake no. Take your right shoulder forward and then your left. Good. And then you're going to walk your hands a little bit more forward in front of you and take them a little bit wider. Knees can go a little wider and take some hip swirls. So you can keep them up high. Imagine that you're stirring a pot with your hips. Or you can go back circle around, come forward, and drop here. Just be mindful of your knees. If you decide to drop, you might need to bring the knees a little closer. Circle back. Forward. And then other direction. You can mix it up. You can take small circles, and then maybe there's a place that when you get there, you're like, wow, that really feels good on that hip or on that side. So just circle a mini little, work a little bit more on the part that needs more attention. And then inhale, come down onto your forearms. You're going to walk your hands a little bit more forward. Bring your knees so that they are directly underneath of your hips so you're nice and stacked with your bones and have um, in alignment here. And then you're going to keep the hips high, think puppy pose, and then relax down, maybe widen the elbows a little bit wider. If you want to stretch through the shoulders, then you'll reach through the fingers and keep this length in the arms. But be really mindful of how that feels on your shoulders. You want to pull the uh, elbows back in and just take that nice lengthening of the spine and the back. That stretch, just do that. You have that towel handy. I've been using my um, eye pillow and I just kind of double it up. So then I put it right underneath the forehead. So just stay there for a few breaths. Inhaling and exhaling, it should feel like a nice stretch for the back and spine. Remember your exhalation. Maybe you're thinking about the breath going into those places on either side of your spine, helping to create a little more circulation. A little more ease. Good. And then taking your hips and sliding them back as you start to bring the soles of the feet towards each other, the toes towards each other, coming back. So in your, in this pose, extended child's pose, you can also use your support, the towel, or this is really um, a nice cushion to have. So I have something to connect to. If my hips are really tight and my, they're not loving going back towards my heels and having some sort of support here feels really nice. You can also switch and put it underneath the soles of your feet if the soles of your feet are having a hard time with the weight of your body here. Bend a lot into the elbows so that you can relax the shoulders you want to make it more active, you can walk the hands over towards the left, breathe for four, come back through the center, over towards the right, breathe for four. Otherwise, just hang out. And reconnect with your breath. See if you can just ride that flow, that wave of your breath. Slowly inhale, start to walk the hands back a little bit. Bringing you back up, coming back onto your floor or your um, neutral uh, table, and then just move a little side to side. So bump the hips to the right, bump the hips to the left. Walk your feet or your knees in so that they're over the hips and that your feet are 
directly behind the knees. We're just gonna take a little flow here before we move down onto the back. So as you inhale, you're gonna reach the arms up over the top of the head. As you exhale, you're gonna fold at the crease here and then take your hands behind you. Try to keep a neutral spine. So don't tuck the chin and don't look forward, okay? Inhale, rise. Imagine that you're just in a little sun salutation on your knees or your legs and then back. If you wanna go all the way down, feel free to do that. We just kind of were there. So there's no need to do that. If you wanna curl the toes, feel free to do that. Think about keeping a nice long spine. Inhale, rise. And every time that you rise, imagine that there's a string on your sternum and it's lifting your heart up. And then exhale, hands come behind you. If you want to interlock, you can add that as you come down. You can interlock, release, and open. Take it about three more times, creating your shape. Maybe you soften through the arms. And then we'll all meet with the arms up, sliding the palms together to the heart. Curl the toes, close your eyes. And then just for a moment, slide back slightly, feeling a nice stretch through the quadriceps. But remember, start slow, relax the shoulders. Maybe just curling the toes and staying here is enough, right? Maybe it's not comfortable for the toes, so they're getting a stretch, and then you can also switch. Give them a break, and curl again. That's one option. Next option is to keep them curled and just glide back. Keeping the extension, try not to round here. Use your whole body, feel a nice opening in the front. If you wanna open the palms, feel really broad and open, you're welcome to do that. Nice. One last time. Also bring your hands here, we'll lift the heart. Slide the hands down. Coming down to the side, and then we're going to come on to your belly for a moment. I'm going to face this direction. So just come on to your belly. And then once you're here, bring your hands together, palms on top of each other. Just wiggle the hips a little side to side. Maybe relax your forehead on your palms if you'd like. I call this a little adult belly time. We don't typically hang out on our bellies. And then you're going to open up your arms. And again, imagine that you're doing those snow angels, but just on your belly this time, right? So you can incorporate the legs if you want. Otherwise, just the hands. You're opening. And when you open, face this way for a second. So when you are opening, you are lifting the chest forward. We're not looking up. We're keeping our eye gaze down, crown of the head forward, but you're reaching with the fingertips and opening. One more time. Relax your hands back in front of you. Head to the palms. You can also stack them if you would like to. Take a breath there. Inhale, exhale, and then you're going to slide those hands around bringing the palms facing up, reach through the crown of the head. And if you'd like to stay here, maybe just hover the feet, pointing the toes. They're pretty active here. You check in and see, they don't need to be touching. You check and see how it feels on your lower back, either with them hip width apart, or you can go a little bit wider. It really depends on your body shape. Inhale, reach forward. If you wanna play around with the hands, feel free. Exhale, come down, shimmy the hips, come up onto your elbows, bring the elbows in close, lift the chest forward, inhale, exhale, come down, stretch your uh, left arm forward, come up onto the elbow, hand and elbow of the right, and then just roll yourself over coming onto your back. So wiggle yourself back over. You rolled off the mat like I did. Good. 
and you're going to take your towel or your um, or your block. I'm just going to use a towel because it's handy. You're going to come in like you would be coming to set up for bridge pose with your feet coming in close. You're just going to use that towel or that block to be right underneath of your hips here. If it's a block, it's a little bit easier to find the sweet spot. The blanket will sort of take up more space. If you have a block, you're going to slide it underneath. And basically, the bony part of your spine right here is about in the middle of the block. But it really depends on your hips and your body size. So you want to adapt to the sensation. So make it fine. You know, if you have it here, you're going to feel your pelvis tilt. If you have it too low, you're going to feel your pelvis tilt. So kind of play around with that. Or your blanket. Or your towel. Just flatten it out. And then notice. Just a little more nourishing for the hips. You want to play around with lifting the legs up, keeping them a little close, not too far out, not touching, but somewhere in between, floating arms to the sides just to get the circulation moving in a different direction. If you have an ottoman or a couch or a chair, you can certainly just float the legs onto the chair. So imagine that this is the edge of a couch or a chair or an ottoman, and you're just letting the, the legs float on to that. Then you're really supported and you feel a nice, I'm not supported here, so my back, I'm not relaxed. So I want you to be able to be relaxed. You need something there to connect with. And that's a really nice way to end your practice. Feel free to do that. So stay where you are. If you are with the um, block or towel underneath, go ahead and slide that out. Lift the hips, lower them down nice and slow. Widen the feet, take the feet towards each other. And take constructive rest for three breaths. And then we'll move into Shavasana, our final resting pose. So again, you can um, end your practice the way we did with something underneath of the knees. If you are with your legs resting on the chair, the couch, the ottoman, just leave them there. Stay where you are. Take your arms out to the sides. Take a moment just to notice your breathing rhythm. If you have your eye pillow handy or a sweater, you can put that over the eyes. Close the eyelids, soften through the face. You can just imagine that the skin is just kind of draping off the bone. Think less and feel more. Imagine that the breath is moving down through the front body, chest, the belly, front of your thighs, or the front of your hips, thighs through the shins, just gently floating out through the bottom of your feet. Next time you inhale, that inhalation is moving up the feet, the legs, the back of the legs, the calves, back of the thighs, softening the back of the hips, lower back, and then just zipping up the spine, slowly making its way through the back, imagining broad, uh, this broadening of the upper back as the breath floats through all the way up the back of the neck, back of the head. Giving 
yourself a few more minutes for your own body, mind, and spirit. Letting all of the movements, the breath work, the new circulation, all of that find places within you to restore so that you have them to tap into when you need them. Feel free to stay there. Feel free to just mute your computer or shut it down. Take as much time as you need to, maybe five more minutes or longer. More Shavasana. Otherwise, just start to bring your awareness back, maybe just rocking your head a little side to side. Wiggling your toes and fingers. And then placing your left hand on your heart, your right hand on top. Take a breath in through the nose, let it out through the mouth. Just take a moment to reflect on something that you're grateful for at this very moment. And giving a little more or extra gratitude for your body and all that it's doing to keep you alive. You tend to focus on things that might not work as well anymore. Or challenges. But be grateful for all that it's doing, all the subtle things to keep you alive at this moment. And you can take a little stretch, opening the arms up over the top of the head. Try keeping your eyes closed. It helps keep your awareness inward as so long as you can. And then drawing the knees towards the chest, rolling over onto your right side. And just stay there for a moment. Be grateful that you took the time to be compassionate to yourself and to support yourself and to nourish yourself. The flow is always transporting you where you need to go. It's merely a question of deciding whether you plan on accepting the ride or having it take you there with your feet dragging. The decision to go with the flow takes courage because you are surrendering the belief that you need to do everything by yourself. Riding the flow of the universe can be effortless, exhilarating, and unlike anything you've ever expected. When you're receptive to being in it, you open yourself to possibilities that exist beyond the grasp of your control. As a child, you were naturally swept by the flow. Tears of sadness falling down your face could just as easily turn to tears of laughter. The mere tiniest wave carrying you forward off the shores of the ocean can transport you into peals of delight. Our souls feel good when we go with the flow of the universe. All we have to do is make the choice to ride its currents. Slowly coming back to a comfortable seat. Take your time, no rush. And eventually we'll inhale, rise the arms up over the top of the head, bring the palms together down to the heart, a little tip of the chin. And then we'll take one ohm to seal and celebrate, practicing as a community. Even though we can't see each other, we can definitely feel the energy and acknowledge that we are always practicing with others globally. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. If you'd like to join in one ohm, feel free. Otherwise, just listen. Inhale through the nose. 
Exhale through the mouth and inhale to Om. Oh. Thank you so much for your time and most importantly, your effort for your own self-care. Have a beautiful rest of your day. And go find a flower to bring it inside. Namaste. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. It was great to see everyone. I have to look on my phone because it's not showing up on my computer. Aviva and Sue and June and Becky, thank you all. It's so wonderful to see your names and to um, know that your great energy is out there. And don't forget, this is the last Facebook Live class. The classes will be switching over to Zoom. Um, I think the class after this is the first one. And keep in touch on the Easy Yoga and Cafe Facebook page, website, or Instagram on how to take more classes. And the YouTube channel has um, lots of free classes as well. Take care and be well. Bye.